Hi, Detroit. Uh, special treat. Always good to you hear people on the radio. Like, who the hell is that? This is Steve. You heard me talk about Steve from Michigan Auto Law before. Uh, Steve, welcome to the show, and good morning. Good morning. Thanks Happy so holidays as well. Happy, soon to be Thanksgiving. That's <laughs> right. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you, um, let's talk a little bit about you. You're originally from Michigan? I am. Uh, born and raised. I went to uh, University of Michigan. Uh, I did go to New York for law school. Ah. Came back and, um, you know, I, I wanted to help people. And uh, my dad had a personal injury law firm. And I remember him telling me when I was uh, a very baby lawyer, he's like, if you want to go into this field, uh, it can't be just for money. It has to be because you really like people and you really, truly want to help them. And and if you do that, money can follow. But but you're doing it because it's a calling and a profession yes. and, and not a business. You're really trying to help people. And um, nice. that's always been my 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 kind of guiding philosophy as a as a personal injury lawyer trying to help the public how many years for you now 30 wow happy anniversary as well thank you wow three decades what That's high school did you go Andover. Andover. Oh, you went to Andover. Andover, which doesn't exist anymore. Uh, but. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, okay. Andover. Oh, okay. yeah. Yes. <laughs> you, you, um, it, it's a difference between auto and truck accidents a little bit. It's, it's a huge difference. Um, so we're actually the only law firm in Michigan that's board certified in truck accident law. Uh, no one else is. And, and what wow. that means is um, trucking really is its own language, right? It, you have to be able to speak the language of trucking. You have to understand the federal motor carrier safety rules. You have to understand all the very special state and federal regulations that apply to trucking cases. Because if you don't, and this is a problem with, I think, 99% of, of lawyers out there. They just handle a trucking case like it's a car accident case, but with bigger policy limits. And what happens, sadly, when they do that is they, they especially in a catastrophic injury or where someone has been terribly killed in a, in a tragedy, they, they miss other culpable defendants who are also responsible for the crash because mm -hmm. they don't know where to look. Or they miss entire layers of insurance. So for a grieving family, they think they're getting one settlement, but they could be literally missing millions of dollars on the table for these people because, again, they don't understand trucking and where to look. So I actually, um, I I'm a past president of the, the trucking lawyers all over the country. I've actually tried these cases and, and litigated these cases in 14 other states as well. Wow. And I've, I've probably spoken now at about 300 trucking seminars teaching other lawyers around the country Whoa. how to handle these cases to actually help their clients. That's, mm. that, that's amazing. You've settled the biggest case uh, in, in Michigan ever. So not only the biggest trucking case in Michigan ever, but... Um, more years than any other lawyer or law firm, we've had the largest trucking settlement and verdict, um, significantly more than anyone else in the state, because it's a specialty. Okay, so at this point, I would like people to put your number in their phone, because you've just hit an amazing point. There are attorneys who handle a truck accident as if they're handling an auto accident. And missing out tremendously and not knowing the specialties of the trucking laws as opposed to an auto accident law. So give me a number. So the, And listen, everybody, just put it in your phone. Lock it. Thank you. 800-968-1001. Uh, 800-968-1001. Or our website, which is michiganautolaw.com. Or uh, autolaw.com. We'll come back to that, uh, as well as you can hear it on the radio. <laughs> um, wow, that that's amazing. Now, you also write a blog. How long have you been blogging? For a long time. Really? <laughs> Basically since blogs started. I was I was one of the first in the country. Um, Whoa! Yeah, it's, but it's fun. So I have a unique perspective as an auto accident and as an insurance lawyer. So I try to write about topics like driver safety, I write about um, consumer education, and I write a lot about the insurance industry because we're the largest law firm in Michigan specializing in auto accidents, so I have a very unique perspective to write about them because I see how they treat our actual clients, and I see how they actually process these claims, so it gives me a first-hand 
you know, view behind the curtain, so to speak. So I always write about which ones for the public because they don't really know, yeah. you know, which ones I recommend that I think are really good for people that really, you know, will pay claims properly and, and which ones I tell people they probably should stay away from. <laughs> you you um, have been writing. Wow, that's a long time. Michigan is one of those states in the country that the insurance industry has been a big mystery. They change the laws. They say they're helping. Politicians run off of all of the chaoticness that the insurance companies have in this state. You've blogged about that a little bit. And from what I understand, uh, it ruffled some feathers. I tend to ruffle feathers from time to time. But um, the, the latest actually is is I am now getting sued by Cure insurance. Now people uh, want to know why because they've heard of Cure. Yeah, so so Cure is is aggressively aggressively advertising in Michigan, yes. especially Detroit, where where they sell about 88% of their policies. Why do you think that is? Uh why Detroit? Why did they do that? What What's your take on it? You do this. You blogged forever. You, you're a speaker around the country. People value what you say. Why do you think they targeted Detroit? It, it's, it's hard to say, but what I think happened is, um, you know, they, they're, they're trying to sell themselves as lower rate insurance, uh, cut rate insurance. And I think they, they saw a target market that was vulnerable to that type of messaging where they could go in and say, um, we will sell lower policies yes. than other insurance companies um, to to a, a potential market that obviously is paying very, very high insurance, um, but doesn't necessarily know what Cure is actually doing behind the scenes. Are they Are they misleading the consumer here? So from my own personal experience, yes. Uh, from the cases we have in our office, yes. Let me, let me tell you what I'm seeing. So, you know, what people need to understand is Cure is brand new to Michigan. Brand new. They've only been here a couple of years. But in just that time, they're already number three in the state in consumer complaints. Number Whoa. three. That's out of 85 insurance companies. So that's a hell of an accomplishment, right? To be, you know, to already be the third highest in terms of consumer complaints out of 85 insurance companies. When you're brand new to a market and 76% of those involve claims handling. And then the other thing that, that unfortunately we've learned because we've taken depositions of some of the cure representatives. No kidding. Is what they're doing to people when they try to actually file a claim. So what, what Cure is doing, and in 30 years, Mason, I've never seen anything like this, but they are essentially doing something called rescission, which is basically canceling people after they try to make a claim. And they're doing it according to their wow. own representative under oath at the rate of 1.5 people per day, Ooh. which is insane. I've never seen anything like that. So you know what I always tell people is insurance only works if it's there for you when you need it. And what I think Cure is doing is they're, they're, they're especially targeting and marketing to Detroit. They're taking people's money. But as you could see from their consumer complaint numbers, as you could see from the, the rates at which they're canceling people when they're trying to make claims, um, it, was it, was, right. it was at least concerning enough to me yeah. that I wanted to write a blog about it to tell people, hey, you need to at least be aware of this. And by the way, all this is publicly sourced. It's on the, the insurance website. Yeah, I was going to say, Michigan. Steve, if, if, if this is public a knowledge, why are they mad at you? I think uh, because I'm informing the public, right? You know, if, if you're spending a lot of money advertising and trying to cultivate an image, but that image appears to be very, very different from the reality of what we are seeing as as lawyers who help people after auto accidents. And by the way, what, what lawyers across the state are seeing, which is that that they are very, very difficult in terms of, of claims handling, uh, which is why 76% of those complaints involve claims. And then, uh, you know, the problem is they, they are very aggressively then also 
looking at these people who are trying to file claims, especially in Detroit, where, where you're technically there, you have a much more vulnerable population that maybe doesn't have the same resources to be able to get lawyers if if to help them. Um, and on things like vehicle damage cases, on things like storage fees when your your car is towed, uh, just on, in terms of like paying people for their wage loss and their yeah. medical, these people can't always get help if they don't have a big case. So they they have a I think a more vulnerable population. Yeah. And and it sure looks to me from the public data and from our own personal experience. Again, as the largest auto firm in the state that has a lot of cases with Cure, and we're helping a lot of people from Detroit, that they're giving these people a very, very hard time um, before they'll ever even play, you know, pay a claim. What's so, the, no, no, go ahead. What's one of the biggest issues that people come to you with, um, like that's a reoccurring issue, like you see it all the time when it comes to these trucking accidents? So for, for trucking cases, um, people don't really understand how bad Michigan is. Mm. So because we're one of the only uh, handful of states that does not have what's called punitive damages uh, that other states do. Mm. What, what that means is that in Michigan, you can't punish a trucking company for intentional, deliberate, bad behavior. And it goes to your question, because what that means is that some of the worst truck drivers in the entire country, they're called grasshoppers because they, they hop around to different jobs. What's happening is they, they are coming to Michigan because they know that these trucking companies in Michigan can still hire them, and they can't get hired in other states that do have punitive damages. So when you've got these truck drivers that have caused too many crashes, that have killed too many people, that have too many uh, traffic safety violations, and they can't get jobs anymore in, in punitive damage states because they're too dangerous, they're too unfit to be behind the wheel... Well, guess what? They come to Michigan and they get hired. And again, the other problem, because we don't have punitive damages, is our out-of-service rates are much higher than the national average. So in Michigan, about one out of every four trucks on our roads is is out of service, which means it's driving with bad brakes, it's driving with bad tires, it's driving with, with mechanical defects that if it were inspected... It would immediately be pulled off the road. They would uh, slap a sticker on the window. It would have to be towed. That's how dangerous they are. So Mm -hmm. I always Mm -hmm. tell people, like, you know, if you're driving in traffic, you see a huge truck driving behind you. Get out uh, the way. You may want to get out of the way. (laughs) That's what you do. You You don't want to get out of the way. I know with with buses in our area who transport uh, students, they're inspected every day. They they take a look at those buses every day because they, they can't afford to be in that situation you're the trucking expert in the world how can people read the blogs so the our, our website is michiganautolaw.com uh, and go to our blog or, or really just google um it, 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 we created a new website to inform the public as a result of my getting sued <laughs> and, <laughs> and and it's called when cure won't pay Dot com. When cure won't pay dot com. Oh, good. You can get additional information, get deeper into mm. what the public uh, perception is, what is facts. Well, more importantly, I think it's it's an important forum for people who are really getting screwed by cure or who know and love people in their family that have cure that are getting, you know, a really tough time and are getting screwed by cure. Give us your name and information. Let us mm. know what they are doing to you. Um, it's really important that we, we learn and about what's, what's happening. Them. And we're trying to help. Yes. We're talking with Steve from Michigan Auto Law. Um, what company is on the other side of it? Like you talked about Cure not being there, but what company works you know, best when I'm dealing with you? So or What companies have you ran across that? So it changes from year to year because insurance companies are like pendulums, right? And they, they swing sometimes from really good to really bad. Mm-hmm. The, the ones that I like right now, I really like farmers. Okay. Farmers. Um, farmers. I, I, like, I like Cincinnati. Um, believe it or not, I think AAA now is, is the best I've seen it in probably two decades. I like AAA. They're not getting okay. out of the business. So they, they have to be better. Right. So they got better. <laughs> they yeah. did get better. Far, did farmers get better. By, by far is probably the leader. And they, and they have in even their sub-companies, <clears throat> excuse me, like Bristol West and, and companies like that are doing You know that. your insurance, Mason. That's pretty good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I just see your lines. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
<laughs> Steve, I'm glad you stopped by this yeah. morning to chat with us a little bit. We always talk about you and we got the commercials, but a chance to just sit and talk with you. And that's fascinating what you said about your dad. Can you can you repeat what he told you in your business? And because whatever the hell he said to you, you became one of the leading experts in the country, which, of course, makes us Detroiters proud as well. But he told you what about being in this Thank business? You. And, and it's incredibly meaningful to me. So um, when I was considering becoming a personal injury lawyer, uh, he literally told me, you can't become a personal injury lawyer. You can't become a people lawyer unless you, you really, really like people and you really want to help them. You have to have that burning desire. And if not... Go help insurance companies and giant corporations. But he said you should look at it like it's a calling. And and I think when you compare our law firm as versus a lot of the, the big giant advertisers that you know tend to load up their lawyers with three hundred plus cases and they can't return phone calls. Right. I think that really separates us because it's really critical for us that we 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 know that we're helping people when they're often the most vulnerable. We return every phone call nights, weekends, we, we, we care. And, and I think that that is why, ironically, the results we have, which, can I brag for a second? No, you absolutely <laughs> you know, I mean, they, But every year they're, they're, they're really ranked objectively by, by Michigan Lawyers Weekly as a top in the state for auto and trucking verdicts and settlements. But the point that I'm trying to make is it comes from caring. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. when you really care about people, you really are trying to do a great job to help them and then everything flows from that. Michigan Auto Law. I, you know, before I let you go, uh, Mason said Detroit is proud of you, and you're one of our stars. Uh, it seems like a lot of people like your blog. Well, what are the numbers looking like? Well, we actually have the largest consumer <laughs> blog in the country, uh, and and it's award winning. Uh, we've won, won awards, but it, we have about eight hundred thousand people coming wow. to our blog every year just to read about the insurance companies to read about <laughs> I got oh I got you the bell, the bell. I got a bell. that's awesome <laughs> you that's got great. a bell buddy I got a that's Monday good, morning Steve. bell <laughs> right. uh, but you know we really try to educate the public and we really try to help people so it's it's that's why you're right about insurance companies and driver safety and consumer protection and you know everything from car seats to school buses um, just trying to help people because we have a very unique perspective as as lawyers that do this kind of work. Great. Mm. Right. Michigan so. Auto Law. Yes. Steve, thank you again. Happy holidays and keep doing the work that you do in our area mm-hmm. and for Michigan. What? That number again. Do it. <laughs> one eight, <laughs> thank you. I'm, that's really sweet. one 800 968 Michigan Auto Law. Your location